sister that we get ready to go forward with our worship experience. Uh, we have a special guest in the house. He's coming. He's one of our mayoral candidates, and he wants to just simply address us. I'm going to ask that we give him a very God bless you. That he is in the person of Brother Bashir Jones. He's coming. Come on, Brother Bashir. He's going to address us really quickly as we get ready to come. All right. Good afternoon. First and foremost, we thank, thank God for the life. And we are honored to be here at such a very historical institution, not only here in Ward 7, but in the entire city. I want to take a moment to just say thank you so much to Pastor Park and all the work that you've done. You all are so blessed to have not just this, this leader, but this doctor, this doctor, this healer, not only for those who are in these four, four walls, but this entire community. Please give Pastor Parker some love, please. I also want to acknowledge uh, my, my big sister and uh, someone who has been doing this work for a long, long time and will be our next, our next Congresswoman, Ms. Chantel Brown, please. that I have enjoyed. I grew up here in Ward 7. I went to MLK Middle School, MLK High School before going off to Morehouse College in Atlanta. And you know, doing all of that, it was people like Reverend Old Smalls who wrote my recommendation letter and said, you can go to Atlanta, but make sure you come back to the community that raised you. And that's exactly what I did. Came back to Ward 7. And these past four years, if you travel throughout Ward 7, you will see amazing growth. Stephen Foundation, brand new hotel, the artwork that is popping up across this neighborhood. And it's a result of letting people know something very clearly. You can build buildings, but you can't do it without building people. You have to do the same thing, both of those things at the same time. And that's the reason why I'm deciding to run for mayor. And our city, our city, if I can be, if I can be truthful, I can't be truthful here, I can't be truthful nowhere. Black people have to do better in this city. Our community has to do better, and we will not do better if we do not put that as a priority. I know people want to say minorities, but I'm speaking specifically about black people. Black people have to stop fighting over problems. We must bake a bigger pie that we all can benefit from. And as mayor, that is my plan. Better city services. We're going to make sure that our police are not policing us, but are serving us. We want to see police officers that represent the diversity of our community. Yeah. This is very important. And right now, the city of Cleveland, I'll go with this, is a $2 billion corporation. But do you know that less than 5% of business is being done with black people, even though this is a majority black city? So what we do is we complain about the young boys on St. Clair and Superior and Kingsman. But we don't talk about the fact that the city of Cleveland is not doing business with black people. I don't care if they got a toilet paper company. We got to spend more money with black people so our community can get better. Yeah. We've invested in downtown, we've invested in the west side, and as mayor, you're going to see us invest in the east side of Cleveland. So I ask you for your vote, and I ask you for your prayers. Yeah. I ask you for your prayers. May God bless you, Pastor Parker. Thank you so much.
good. It makes you want to preach in here. Good morning, get sent me back to church. Now let's give that choir to have praise in your right now, sir. That's part of Most of you are my pastor here, Phyllis. Senior Pastor Shroud, staff this church, and the executive director of the Cleveland Clergy Coalition. Please excuse me for being a little late. We have service at 9 on Miles. We have full service. We've been doing that for the week before COVID. We had service at 9. One of the few churches that started service at 9 o'clock. Now everybody wants to do it. But that's okay. So that's why I'm going to try to thank you just heard. I uh, understand uh, my choice for mayor of the city of Cleveland, Marcia Jones. Give me a big hand, would you? He is the right candidate for this critical time in which we live. Uh, Deacon K asked me when I came in uh, that I would I introduce this lovely congresswoman. I said, it'd be my honor to. Let me tell you, a best partner had her, we had her come in. You're, you're a pastor. I just want to tell you all this, uh, DK. He is doing a magnificent job of working with the clergy. He's doing a fantastic job. I love that partner. He, you know, he comes phone calls, he follows up, he shows up. He's the right kind of pastor, and we thank God for him. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate that. That's a nice shirt you got over there, brother. I wear a shirt like that. I, but I will tell you, I have known this lovely young lady for a very long time. And I mean, I know her like a little sister. But I will tell you, I have seen her transform into the fantastic leader for us in these present times. And because of your help and your support, we got the right person going to Congress and taking the following the lead of Marsha Fudge, and that is our next Congresswoman, Chantel Brown. Would you please bring her up here? I just love her so much. Because that is the great equalizer in our nation. Whether you are black or white, 
rich or poor, gay or straight, Democrat or Republican, from GED to PhD, everybody gets one vote. Let's give them a break. God bless you. When our writing time schedule is time for us to participate uh, in our giving here at the Gethsemane Church, you that are on Facebook, you that are on YouTube, you that are on our conference call, uh, you can simply give to this ministry uh, by way of Cash App. You can do that by way of cash app or with your electronic device go to dollar sign GBC Mika that's dollar sign GBC Mika or you can simply mail those ties in to 1885 East 79th Street Cleveland, Ohio 44103 or you can simply call our church hotline at 216-795-2307 and somebody will be glad to come out and pick those ties and those offerings up for you it's giving time, and we're going higher in our service. Come on, let's put our hands together as we go higher in the Lord. Let's go back to you, let's have a little church again. Come on, let's give
chapter 20, I'm sorry. Chapter 20, verse number 15 is where we begin and commence reading. It says from the King James Intelligence, And he said, Hearken ye, all of Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, that thou, King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not dismayed, nor be afraid, by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Zeus, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook, before the wilderness of Jewel. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. The Lord is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go not go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. That's good for preaching. I simply want to ask that you would participate this morning and look at somebody and tell them you can sit this one out. Come on, that was a hater. Come on, we're going to celebrate and tell them you can sit this one out. Amen. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, in 2 Chronicles chapter number 20, I believe that the story of Jehoshaphat has been placed in the Word of God to show us how to handle the situations that are completely out of our hands. I believe, ladies and gentlemen, in this place that it's been placed here to show all of us that there are some things that you and I just cannot handle by ourselves. But then there are things only God himself can handle. When you read, ladies and gentlemen, these opening verses of this particular chapter, he receives word that the Moabites and the Ammonites and others with them have decided to team up against Israel with the intent of tag teaming Israel into submission. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the most one-sided battles in the annals of human history. But they are not facing one army, but they are facing several armies. It gives way to the saying that if it ain't one thing, come on, help me preach it, surely it's saying another. Somebody this morning came to church today and may feel like you're under attack from different directions by different situations. The bills keep coming. The x-ray may not have been good. The marriage is tearing apart at the seams. The children are making bad decisions. The job is no longer what you want to do and you're angry because you got to go in order to make your ends meet. Somebody may be saying to you that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, but the light that you see looks like an oncoming train. Can I help us and tell us as we look at this text today, this is an unusual battle because they are not going to fight. God literally says, but, but you can't sit this one out. And I want to sign up this morning to tell somebody that's listening to me that you can also sit this one out because God is about to do something major in your circumstance and in your situation. If you're familiar, ladies and gentlemen, with all of the miracles that are in the Bible, you know that all of the elements, all of the, all of the miracles that are in the Bible have some element of human involvement. Before he 
he opened the Red Sea. Yes, sir. He had Moses to stretch out the rod. Amen. I wish I had somebody. Come here, come here. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen, before he turned water into wine. Yes, sir. They had to fill the water pots. Yeah. Before he raised Lazarus come from here. the dead. Come here. They had to move yes, the stone away. Before, ladies and gentlemen, he raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. Yes, the folk in the house had to go outside the house. Yes, but in the house, he changed the atmosphere. Yeah. Oh, brothers and sisters, every now and then, yeah. God has to change the rules. Yes, and the only way out is God got to do it by himself. Ladies and gentlemen, this story looks to me like a story of defeat. It looks like a story of devastation. But God himself, the text says, turned it around. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the problems in the body of Christ is that we think our victories come by fighting and victory. But can I help you, ladies and gentlemen, I come to bust your bubble this morning and tell you that God will give you the victory yeah. if you do like they did in the text. Sit down, wait, and shut up. I wish I had somebody. Can you look at somebody and tell them again? You can sit this one out. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. My assignment this morning is to show you your position while you're watching and waiting for God to do the work in you. You need to know, ladies and gentlemen, that sometimes your life is not about what you want, but it's about what you already have. I wish I had somebody already have. You're not trying to get nothing new. You're fighting to keep what you got. This is the same thing that you done. Three points and I'm going to let you go. If ever you're going to sit this one out, the first thing that you have to do is you have to raise your perspective of, of God's power. Yes, sir. Raise your perspective of God's power. Church, the word attack comes in verse number one. But in verse number two, the text says, Brother Jack, he Praise. Yes, let, me, let me rewind this play for the folk that's sleeping on me. Yeah. The word of attack comes in verse number one, but in verse number two, the text says that he prays. Jehoshaphat has a weak army, but he has a strong faith. Yeah. And when life, sometimes brothers and sisters, gets rough, gets bad, you will have that moment that you will have God to test your faith and your faith will show up only in your prayer life. Yes, yes, Listen, ladies and gentlemen, the formula to your winning the battle mm. is on your knees. Yes, Somebody still needs to help you wake up one more time. Step, boy. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, the formula for you winning the battle there's got to be on your knees. Yes, sir. Don't, ladies and gentlemen, fire an arrow. Don't worry about lifting a hand. God says, the battle belongs to the Lord. Say the word. Say the word. They don't, this is the place they don't even fire off an arrow. They don't lift a hand. They don't raise their voice. But the text says he prayed first. Yes, Many times, ladies and gentlemen, in the body of Christ, we run a plot that pray. No! Come here. I had him right oh, we run a plot yeah. that pray. We run a plan that pray. We run a try to forget it and for figure it out why instead of letting God work it out. Yeah. Yeah. He will. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. Since this ain't helping nobody, let me tell your story. That's the depth of the truth. Yeah. Here it is. A dad watches his son, Dean uh -huh. Johnson, uh -huh. out of the window, and his son is trying to move.
move a big stone so that he can play in the field next to the house. The father watches him some 30 minutes as the boy tries with all of his might to move this big old rock. Ladies and gentlemen, the boy finally gives up and he decides, I don't want to play no more. Dad says to him, why don't you come in so soon? The boy said, Dad, I couldn't move the rock out of the way. Dad says to him, well, did you try all of your strength? Did you try all of your options? The boy said, yeah, Dad, I did. The father looks at him and said, no, you didn't, because you didn't ask me. Somebody stupid. Come here for just a minute, ladies and gentlemen. Until we learn how to ask God for help, we will continue to struggle and strain our way through this thing called life. Some songwriter wrote the song, ladies and gentlemen, Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not care every pain to God in prayer. But then, ladies and gentlemen, if you're following me and I sleep on me, go to verse number five and six. He says, aren't you the God of heaven? Don't you rule over all the nations and the kingdoms? And in your hand isn't there power and might and nobody can stand up against you? Ladies and gentlemen, need I remind you that these are rhetorical questions. But Jehoshaphat is not asking these questions for an answer. But he already knows the answer, but he's reminding himself that the situation may be too big for me, but it's never too big. Somebody gonna help me out the way. For our God. He understands, ladies and gentlemen, the best way through a problem is to magnify the power of God. There ought to be somebody that's in this place today that knows that when you've been in trouble, when you began to magnify the power of God, God will show up and show up. Because God specializes in things you think are impossible. Can I tell you that he will do what no other power can do? Church, when you admit that it's out of your hands, that's when God will turn around and put it in his hands. Look at somebody and tell him, put it in his hands. Whatever it is, put it in his hands. If it's a insurmountable problem, put it in his hands. If it's church issues, put it in his hands. If it's a marital problem, put it in. Somebody help me to do this. If it's a child that's running wild, put it in his hands. In order to sit this one out, brothers and sisters, not only must we raise our perspective of God's power, but number two, watch this, you must remember his performance in the past. It's right there in verse number seven, if he says like this, he says, aren't you the one? Church, what strengthens your faith is when you need a miracle is when you remember how he moved in the past. Come here. Come here. Somebody, somebody still ain't catching it. Let me knock on your door and push the door in since you won't answer it. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, his performance in the past will give you peace in the present. Yes, sir. Every now and then. Yes, sir. We need to pull our faith back. When David faced Goliath, his ability was questioned. Yeah. He went in his faith by Come here, David. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he saw yes, when yes, God yes. was with him, yes, covering his yes, encounter with a lion and a bear. Yes, and he said to himself, if God can do that, yes, sir. Yes, sir. then I know that he can handle yes. this situation. 
situation. I want to know this morning, is there anybody that's in this place with a giant situation? And you know that if God did it in the past, he can do it again. Well, I have sisters, there ought to be somebody in this place that has a faith by. You ought to every now and then know that if God put food on the table, then I know he can do it again. If God brought me out of cancer before, he can. Somebody gonna help me out of that. If God fixed the situation before, I know he can do it again. Y'all ain't saying nothing, y'all ain't like cool this morning. But some of y'all need to go to the shelf of forgetfulness and remind yourself who it was that spared you, who it was that saved you, who it was that made you. You'll say like my granddaddy used to say, all brothers and sisters, if he did it then, I know he can do it again. All oh, brothers and sisters, is there anybody in this place that need God to do it again? Come on, don't shake your head at me. I need to hear your voice. Is there anybody that's in this place that need God to do it again? Jehoshaphat says, ladies and gentlemen, we don't know how we're going to handle this situation. But our eyes are on the Lord. Watch it, ladies and gentlemen. That's a problem sometimes. Instead of having a horizontal sight, many times we need to have vertical sight. Yeah, yeah. In essence, we need to keep our eyes yeah. on Him yeah. and not them. Yeah. Wish I had him to walk in. Watch on. this, ladies and gentlemen. While we are waiting on God to move, we show acknowledgement. And we should acknowledge his power, but also accept God's prerogative. Yeah. Yes, which is to say, just because he has not done it, does not mean that he won't do it. Yeah. Oh, brothers and sisters, the goodness of God is based on his attributes, yeah. not his actions. But we get it confused, for you see, his attributes is who he is. But his actions is what he does. Somebody still missed it. And even when his actions change, his attributes remain the same. There ought to be somebody in here, at least two or three of y'all, and I make four, that will acknowledge, ladies and gentlemen, that my God is the same. Today, tomorrow, and forever. More. I may not get what I want, but he's still worthy. Ladies and gentlemen, every now and then, God will remind us that 
he doesn't need our two cents. God tells him that he doesn't need the only thing that God says that he needs is when he looks at the house of God and tells them, the only thing I need is your praise.
for each of these individuals that's under the sound of my voice, I ask that you to cover them, continue to guide them, continue to direct them. I'm asking the Lord that if there's any issues uh, in their life that they're dealing with, go ahead and let them know that they can sit this one out. Because we learned today that the battle is sometimes not ours, but it is the Lord's. We love you. We manifest praise to you right now. We blow a kiss from earth to heaven. We ask that you would cover us as we reach our destinations. Ladies and gentlemen, let's simply say, Amen. Thank you.